All right. So last time I showed you a few things with the different uh, those busy modules and the beat modules, so you could quickly like drag videos in Jeez. and out. Um, but uh, that's kind of like amateur night. So this time I'm going to show you a different way to get video into your patch. And we can use a movie player. So I'm going to say JIT dot QT dot movie is our player. And then I give it a size, which is the resolution of the video, 320 by 240. So it's kind of small. In fact, it makes it small. So. To make this thing work, right, or to see the output, I can use one of the things I used last time, which was the jit.p window. I can just connect that up like that. And to get this to do anything, I need to give it a file. I need to tell it to start and stop, stuff like that. So I'm going to make a few messages. Read will give me uh, a file dialog. Start will start it playing. Stop will stop it playing. I can connect all these things. And so then, if I click read, it'll ask me for a file. You can actually into the uh, and it'll start playing. But you can only hear the audio, right? You're not seeing any video happening, right? So to get the video, we need to hit the, the QT movie object with uh, like a constant stream of bangs, which is going to trigger it to to have a frame rate, right? And for video stuff, right, we looked at the metro, sorry, the metro object last time, which would give us a, that constant output, right? But this time I want to use a Q metro. And the difference is, uh, what happens with the metro when your your processor starts to lag? So if you ask your computer to do too much stuff and it can't keep up with the speed of the metro, right? So a regular metro is so you give it one second. Every second it's going to output that bang, right? If the processor starts like overclocking, it's going to you might get one bang like every. 1.001 seconds, you'll get the bang, and then you'll get one at 1.0 seconds, and then you get one at 1.0001 seconds, right? So there might be a little bit of a delay in there sometimes. Q-Metro does not do that. Q-Metro, you want it to output every one second. It'll give you bang every second. If it can't hit that mark, it skips that one and resumes with the next one. So it preserves the interval over the quantity. What that means is that we can make a Q-Metro really fast, like every two milliseconds. And toggle that and put that into there. OK, and now we got our little video, our very, very tiny video. That's great. Um, how does that help the speed projection map? All that does is give us the, the video that we can work with now. The next thing that we want to do is get that video. Probably for projection mapping, we want to project uh, probably full screen. Right? We don't want to see the patch. We just want to be able to work with the video in the whole area of the projector. So, if I make a JIT window versus a P window, it'll immediately give me this like external floating window. 
they will show my video. I can give it a name. So now you'll notice at the top it's called mapping instead of that random string of characters uh, that it had. And that will become important when we start adding other things that we want to affect this window. If I connect my movie to that, it'll play the movie out of that window. Okay. So in Max, I can give some objects different attributes, right? The best way to find out what those attributes are is to look at the reference. And the reference will change depending on the object you have selected. And it will tell you what the object is at the top. It will tell you messages that it can accept, and then attributes down here. And this one has quite a few. So one thing that I know I always want to have on is FSAA, which is this um, full scene anti-aliasing. So I say at FSAA one. Okay. Other messages I may or may not want to be on all the time, like full screen. I want to be able to enable full screen, but I don't want it to always be on full screen because then I won't be able to do any other work, right? So I can make a message called full screen. And then I'm going to say dollar sign one. And what the dollar sign one is, is whatever it receives on its input, it's going to replace with that variable. That's like a variable. So if I throw in a toggle, now the toggle is either going to be zero or one. Conveniently, that's like on or off for the attribute. So now I'm not going to click that because I won't be able to get out of it. Good call. <laughs> uh, I want to be able to click the keyboard, a key on the keyboard, like the escape key, to trigger the full screen, right? Uh, to toggle it. So I need some more things. I can use a key object. And the key object is going to give me the ASCII code for whatever key I click. One on one? I don't know. E. Uh, so, for instance, uh, the keys I know I'm going to use escape is 27, um, C is 99, and M is 109. So, I'm going to put in a select object. So I say, I can abbreviate it with SEL or type out the whole word, select. And so select lets me uh, take an input, and if it matches that, give me an output. Right, so I want to say select 27, which is my escape key. So now if I hit the escape key, I'm going to connect that to that toggle. So now, I can toggle my full screen. Yeah, so the dollar sign and the one go together. Mm -hmm. um, and you'll sometimes see that Max typically avoids variables. Right? We're familiar with variables in other programming. Max typically avoids variables, but sometimes it's like a necessity. So with this message, it's saying take input number one and put it in this variable. So it's getting a zero or a one from the toggle, which also triggers sending that message. So because the dollar sign there, that message is going to be saying swap out the one with the dollar sign? Yes. So if we do, let me do a couple of things here. I'm going to connect the left end of this message so we can see what the toggle is giving us. And then another one so we can see what that message is actually outputting when we click it. Right. Right. <laughs> okay, so when it turns off, we get a zero, 
and uh, this says full screen zero. Let me disconnect this so we can do that again. It is still a variable because I could put something else in there, like I could give it the word cat, and it would give me full screen cat, which would not do anything to my JIT window, but it would give me full screen cat. So it just merges variables and stuff? Right. I could do this another way. This is, this is the easy way to do this with less steps. Okay. I could also say the message is full screen. And I want to um, append, or I want what I want. What I want to do is prepend the input with the message full screen, right? So now, if I have a toggle on this one and this, it'll do the same thing. It's just a few more steps. So I can use prepend or append to concatenate messages together. Uh, let me reconnect that. Okay. Cool. 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 Okay. So so now I've got um, my full screen video. That's fantastic. Uh, one thing I don't like, though, is that I have the menu bar up here, right? If I'm doing an installation, I don't want to see the menu bar. It's gross. <laughs> so another attribute uh, that I can look at over here for my JIT window is FS menu bar, right? So I can enable or disable the menu bar. I could disable the menu bar outright by putting at FS menu bar zero in here. But every now and then when you're working on your installation, it's helpful to be able to access that menu. So I'm going to use a different key code in this format to trigger that. So I'm going to say fs menu bar dollar sign one. And I'm, I can just add another argument to my select. What did I say? M was 109. And so this is going to tell me when I hover over it if input matches 1 and 9. Great. Back those up. So now I've got full screen and the M key. Hey. Ah, you know why? I need the toggle. Ha ha ha. There we go. Okay, so that's great. So now I've got full screen video. Uh, but I, the whole point here is projection mapping, right? So I need to be able to manipulate basically the shape of that video to fit a different kind of shape. That we have to do a bit more complex. So right now, all this video is actually running on the processor of my computer. If I want to start manipulating video essentially in three-dimensional space, uh, I need to put that on the graphics card. Right. So I'm going to use OpenGL to do that. So I'm going to get rid of this. And to use the to use OpenGL to use the graphics card, you dot GL. And to do to do corner pinning, it's actually just corner pin. But I need to tell it the window that I want to corner pin. I had named it mapping, right? So I'm gonna use the same thing there. And this gets connected over there.
But because I'm using the the graphics card for the corner pinning, this still wants to use the processor, so it's not gonna um, it's not gonna do what I want it to do because uh, it's not gonna recognize that this is happening. So I basically need to tell Max to render my video to the graphics card. Okay. And to do that, I'm going to do a jit.gl render. Also, that window mapping. Except I need a period there. This is kind of global because it's referring to that window, so I don't need to actually plug my video into it. Um, but I do, for the sake of, of my speed of the video, I need to erase it and trigger it at the same time that I'm playing the video. So I need to connect it to that metro, but I want it to erase as well. So I'm going to use that trigger object, which allows me when the trigger object gets hit, I can have it send out multiple messages. So I'm going to have it send out a bang, another bang, and an erase. So the erase is going to go in there, bang is going to go in there, this is going to go to the metro. And this one, uh, I'm going to use JIT FPS GUI, just so I, can, so I can see what my frame rate is. Hella fast right now. So now, you can see my corner pin working because it's got these circles. And I can click on these circles and drag them around. Okay. This only works on the graphics card. Well, but if you had a different graphics card, would it possibly Oh, like which graphics card is it you do? No, so is Max doing all this? Okay, uh, so we can see now, like, if you have some, basically this lets you do all, like, three-dimensional keystoning, right? So if you're projecting onto some weird passive surface, you can make your video fit. You can even like deform your video into a triangle just by flattening out one of these things, but it looks a little weird. Uh, okay, that's cool, but uh, I don't want these things to be there all the time, right? That's irritating. So those are a property of corner pin. Called draw corners. <coughs> So again, message, draw corners, plus on one, toggle, two, three, four, four, four. Uh, How can I do this? Maybe this time. Oops, oops. Okay. So yeah, so I want to be able to do that full screen because you can only really do this well in full screen mode if you're mapping it onto an object, right? So yeah, let's attach that to a key. That I want to be the C key, C for corners. That was, what did I say, key 99? Yes. Yes, excellent question. Can I still move the corners? Yes. The issue with that is, if you're working with one video, it's fine, right? Um, but I'm about to show you, you can, you can put a lot of videos into that frame, but they all like are on top of each other, so it can be very confusing to try to figure out which corner actually you're, you're working with. Um, so now if I use the C key, I can make those come and go. Great. Okay, 
right, so if I want to have another video, I basically just need to copy this stuff. Except my patch is getting like pretty messy now, right? Um, and there's a good chance that if I like come back to this later, I'm not going to remember what's going on. So I'm going to clean up a few things here because I also need a metro for this one. It's be a, a best practice to only have one metro in your patch because they can confuse each other and slow the whole process down. So I'd want to do this, but now I've got like cords running all over the place, right? So I can use two objects to help reduce the number of patch cords, and they are send. So I'm going to say send bangs, and I'm going to say receive bangs. And so this works anywhere within the patch. Anything that goes in to the send outlet comes out of, or into the send inlet goes out of the receive outlet. So I can just take this over here, put that on there, uh, put this on my metro, and get rid of all these other metro ones. Because now I can take this, like give this its own space. And I need to copy some of these back over there, back over here. Okay. Yes. Excellent point. Comments are easy. Um, you just press C and you just type text. There. Little text box. What else am I going to do? I also need to put this draw corners onto this one. Uh, but again, I don't like that. So I'm going to make another send and receive pair. I can also abbreviate these, which is nice. So for send, I can just say S. I'm going to call that DC for draw corners. And then R, DC, send and receive. Copy that one. These things. Get rid of that. Send. Um, it's right. It's kind of like it's similar to a variable name. It's not really a variable because it is only going to be registered by send and receive. But yeah, so anything then that has receive bangs is going to get that. Okay, so this is great. This is looks a lot cleaner now. I've got my two videos. Uh, to really see this take effect, of course, I need to read video. It can be a different video. I just happen to have this video handy. And so now I can arrange different videos in space and time. So I could, for instance, projection map into a cube. That's not a cube, but... Yes. There, okay, how do we deal with that? That's an excellent question. If I look at my window and the inspector instead of the reference, you can see it's got some color settings here. So I'm going to change the background color to black, which when you're projecting is nothing. I can also drop the opacity down. That didn't work. Oh, God. That applied to the object itself. <laughs> Come back. 
In theory. You know what? That's a very good question. I'm going to get back to you on that one. I've done it before, uh, but I can't off the top of my head remember how to do it. Those properties um, control the color of things, like watch the window mapping object in the patch. <laughs> Not the actual object, yeah. Can be useful sometimes, not in this case. All right. So that, so then, okay, so let's take a look here, full screen, get rid of the menu, put in our corners, fix stuff up. The crosshairs? Um, Oh, from like one to the yeah, no, that's also a very good question. Corner color. Let's see. So if we take this one and we say at corner color one twenty seven. I typed it wrong, didn't I? Yeah, yeah it's gone underscore. Apparently, one twenty-seven is right. It might be just using like a hue slider. Um, the only other thing that can be useful, right? So, what this is not showing you. If I save this and open this again. It's going to default to both of these planes being like on top of each other, right? Like in a default state. Um, and again, with the corners, it can make it hard to figure out which one you're pulling around. So we can like manually make a message to give it a default state whenever we load the patch, but it's a bit um, lengthy, so I'm going to actually just copy it and paste it from the demo that I posted on web courses. Yeah, I'll show you that. So if I say upper left, 0, 0, upper right, 0 0.50, upper lower left, 0 0.5, lower right, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, it takes whatever the window is and treats it as a percentage. So 0 0.5 is halfway. One is all the way. So if I put this on here, and let's get it so I can see both again, and I click this message and send it into the corner pin, you'll see that video, which is actually the red one back there. So let me move this out of the way. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, it's going to shift over into this quadrant. Boom. Okay. And so then I could change those numbers to be 0 0.50, like shift them all over so the next video would appear there and send that message to this one. Just so that when I start out, I can click these messages and see where they all are and move them. 